Now, let me go check out this front bumper business, because I don't even believe, I mean, like, really? Like, come on, dog. Like, how? Yeah, 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 I'm back again. It's me, I'm back. Oh, dang, hold up. I'm gonna get back in my, let me get back in my angle. Hold up, I'm gonna get my camera straight how we doing. Okay, okay, hello. Hola, como estas? Yeah, what's up? Listen, it's been a while. It's been a while, it's been a while. But I'm here now. Listen, I'm too low. It's 15,000 miles. Yeah. Time to update y'all. So, <clears throat> while I did park in the shade, it's a bit it's a bit hot out here, man. What can I say? At least the sun isn't beaming, but, yo, I'm here. Might be a little bit of an echo because I'm in between two warehouse buildings. But, you know, it's the quiet spot. There's the car. 15,000 miles. That's what we're here to talk about. Now... Anybody that's been on my channel, seen the video, I did 2,000, I did 9,000. So this one isn't going to be, I mean, I don't got to get too detailed because I already did that at 2,000 and 9,000. And if you're really looking at a GR Corolla, by this stage of the game, there is no way you ain't read everything about this car. You know about the differences on the trim levels. I have a core one. There's a Marizo. There's a Circuit. But for the sake of the fact that somebody's probably gonna stumble upon this video, maybe not seeing my other previous ones, we're gonna do a quick rundown, okay? I have a GR 2023 Toyota GR Corolla Core. Now, what's the difference between the Core and the Marizo and the Circuit? Let's just show the differences. The Circuit Edition one will have gloss black on this rear diffuser. It'll have a spoiler on the back that's gloss black. It'll have a forged carbon roof. It'll have the same wheels. It'll have a different hood with vents on it that bulges up. And on the front grille, it'll have gloss black. That is the main differences on the outside. On the interior, here's what you're gonna have. I'm gonna open mine. Interior wise, seats look the same, but the material on the center is like Alcantara. There is more red, there's red stitch leather on the front part of this door card, more soft touch on the armrest there. Somewhere on the steering wheel, there's stitching there that's red, mine is white on the core one. I may have an armrest there, that's from an aftermarket company, so mine is just red stitching because I liked it. We'll get to that later. That's what you're gonna see on the interior, the difference. The Marizo one takes something a step further. The Marizo one is like the special edition, track oriented, super limited version of the GR Corolla. The main difference, don't mind my, you know, windshield sunblock, the rear seats on the Marizo do not exist. I'll throw a picture up in this video. You'll see that it's just a flat space parcel shelf with a bar on it for like harnesses and something else. That's pretty much it. On the outside, the outside has the same forged roof as the circuit, but the wheels are different on the Marizo. The Marizo has some BBS wheels that are forged, so they look a little bit different than these that I have on the core and on the circuit. And then that's pretty much it. The main thing that happens on the core is that you can get a core model without any packages on it, which is no performance pack, no tech pack, no cold weather package. If you happen to find one without any packages, I mean, it may not be a bad deal, because honestly, people sometimes argue, which one should I do? Should I do one without a performance pack? Should I do the perform? It just depends on what you're gonna do. I personally wanted the limited differentials because I wanted to be able to drive it in the manner that it was designed to do. So 
you got to kind of make that if you hear wind in the noise you hear the wind blowing you got to kind of make that up for yourself right i can't answer that for you you got to decide what it is that matters the most to you when it comes to this car and that's the differences really i mean price obviously is different you can look at the price performance wise i have the performance pack you can always tell somebody has the performance pack on a gr corolla because the brake calipers will be red not that somebody can't paint the standard non-performance pack calipers red because they can and they can add that same sticker so it's really not that big of a difference if you really wanted to i don't know fake it till you make it the big thing is the differentials under the car that allow you to change the track mode from 50 to 50 30 to 70 for the torque split that's why you want the performance pack i have the tech packet at the jbl sound system <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be perfectly honest in the beginning i said the jbl sound system sounded good i tweaked with it more it's decent and decent is going to be based on your ears i am into music producing music production so my ears is just i'm more finicky right i'm the audiophile and not even really audiophile because i can still listen to it and i'm fine but if you hear people complaining about it it's us geeks we're the, we're the audio nerds okay the nerds that are sitting there like yo i don't hear the bass the treble ain't coming in there's no mid-range is not it's just what we're complaining about i'm gonna rectify that at some point in time the company oem plus audio is making some type of aftermarket situation for the gr corolla i pray they have a subwoofer in their package like they do for the gr86 i'm assuming i'm gonna see all this at sema because nobody's making an announcement about it yet Maybe I'll be at SEMA, maybe I won't, I don't know. If I do, maybe that's when I'll spark up my vlogging at big auto shows or something like that, but don't hold me to it. But here's the main thing. What has been going on since the last time we saw you car quicks? You were at 9,000, it's 15,000 now. Maybe somebody's their first video to see of mine. They're like 15,000 on the GR Corolla. Bruh, it's only been out for maybe not even a year yet, relax. I'm in the stridded eats, okay? I'm gonna tell you what's been going on. No, the car is not perfectly clean because why am I gonna perfectly clean it for a video when I'm trying to show the daily driving aspect of this car? Now, as you know, my front bumper has PPF, right? Just the front bumper, the headlights, and the side view mirror caps. I did not PPF the whole car. I've already been through this. I do not think it's worth it. That is my opinion. When it comes to daily driving cars and the amount of money it costs to PPF a car, it's like a screen protector. You do have to change it eventually at some point. You're talking about four to five grand to put plastic on the car. Listen, man, I'll touch a paint it before I'm dropping five grand to put plastic all over a car. I ain't doing it, okay? But that's just me. I'm not saying it's not worth it. I've watched plenty of videos on PPF or Ferraris and Porsches and everything of every other car. And I think it's really good. It does have its benefits. In the hard hitting spots, front bumper, headlights, side view mirror caps, there is a benefit to having there. But because this is 15,000 miles, we're gonna talk about a couple things that I've, I got some different opinions on a couple things, right? Let's start off with the exterior for the first part. The paint on Toyota cars is minimal, okay? It's minimum. Now, should they add more? Should there be an extra layer of clear coat and paint? Please, yes, absolutely, but there's not. So there are a few chips of paint here and there on the car. I don't know exactly where they're at. I know there's one like on the side skirt here, probably there you can see a little spot on the video right there, chow, right there, right there. There goes one. I don't know if any of this is. That's just dirt that just rubbed off, that too. But there's a few on the side skirt part. Now, this portion here is not like blasted, like a sandpaper, because I thought it would by now at 15,000 miles. I thought it'd be blasted and then it's gonna look terrible, but it does not. This still looks good. But you do have a few points where there are some rock chips and paint little chips on it because I've been driving it, but it's not terrible, okay? This is what the hood looks like, 15,000 miles, no PPF. Let me give you some, 
some idea. I know people say everybody daily drives, but some people daily drive on the back road around some hills going 35 miles an hour. I drive in Texas on I-10 every single day. I'm in the left lane. It's 80, 85, 95, allegedly the speed limit I always do. <laughs> so I'm always moving in a way where if there's a rock, if there's anything like that, it's gonna happen on this car. So I'm not just babying it on some back roads and somebody's gonna say, man, of course there ain't no rock chips, bro. You don't be nowhere. I'm there. I'm on the highways and the byways. So that's what it looks like. The hood is in very good condition. I am gonna change it. I have a friend of mine, Hachi Brew. You've seen him on my other videos when we're putting exhaust on his car. He has a circuit hood for me. I gotta pick that up. That's gonna be going on here because while everybody kind of has some jokes about everybody's a core putting circuit parts on it and they call it a circus and this and that, it's just kind of, it's funny, it's hilarious, which I do think it's a circus, but the hood looks the best. And I don't really care for carbon fiber because you, I'm gonna paint it and OEM fitment is always better than aftermarket fitment. So you really can't go wrong. So I'm gonna throw that on there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rear. I had a certain wing coming in from a certain group by, but I don't know if I'm going that route anymore. Change of heart, change of mind, that's what things happen. Life goes on, things happen, things get in the way. That's just what it is, okay? So I don't know what I'm doing on the rear yet. But the front, I'm gonna do the bumper. I mean the bumper, I'm gonna do the hood. The bumper, at some point in time, we are gonna have some front lip action down here. There are plenty of manufacturers that are making stuff. I don't know what kind they're going to be. I don't know which one it's going to be, but I do know something's coming. Artists and Spirits, which is one of my favorite brands out of, excuse me, out of Japan, they released a kit for the GR Corolla. It looks great. It costs what it costs because it's Artists and Spirits. It's from Japan and freight and distribution. It ain't cheap. If you want the all carbon kit for this car, it's eight grand. That's ridiculous. The FRP one is something like 4,000, which some people buy. You know, I ain't paying that much for plastic and polyurethane, which I mean, okay. But listen, the world's changed. People got to make profit too. These companies you want around and making parts for us, they got to turn a profit somehow. There's people working for them. So I'm not really against the cost necessarily. It ain't the cheapest thing, but if I was to do the artisan spirits on the GR Corolla, I would probably do just a front lip and the side skirts. And I love the way their mid wing looks. And then I'll find other pieces for the diffuser and everything else. But back to the car and what it looks like. Here's the front grill. Right now the front grill is a dirty mess, but it's not destroyed. It's not, there isn't like chips on the fog lights. There isn't like marks on the grill itself. And surprisingly, surprisingly, I want you to look at the intercooler. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying there aren't some fins that are dented from whatever's flying through there or a moth or a bug or a fly because if you notice, our grill doesn't have like any mesh that's gonna stop something pretty large to cut through there. So all things withstanding, we ain't looking bad, okay? Now, later on, maybe I'll upgrade the intercooler when I get down the path of aftermarket parts and things like that. But as we stand now and as we look at the car, we are in decent good. We are in good condition, not even decent. We are good. This is what it looks like. 15,000 miles. Toyota emblem. That is where the radar sensors are. That's the condition it's in. Headlights, bumper. I mean, listen, this could be in much worse condition. But it's not. Even the fitment on it, things like that, everything feels good. Now I'm looking at something here right now as I'm talking. And I don't know if that's... You know what? We do have something wrong. Man, hold up. Wait a minute. See here, now, I don't think anybody bumped into my joint, my jaw, but this isn't lined up as good as it should be. 
I don't know what happened there. Honestly, I'm right now. Re- this is real time. I'm checking this and I'm like, hey, yo, is that supposed to be a tad bit closer? I don't know. Listen, I may put this in the video. I may not. But all I'm saying is something ain't right. But from a distance, you can't tell. So I don't really know what could have happened or what could not have happened. But we'll find out later. I'm going to check into it later. That's the whole front end of the car. Now, off to the sides and everything. Now, I'll I'll be perfectly honest here. (laughs) The brake dust situation has not been rectified. I know folks are going to say, yo, ceramic coat. I did. They're going to say, yo, use the wet. I did. They're going to say, I did it. I did it. The brake dust is stupendously wild, okay? So there's no hope for that. And I'm okay. I'm living with it now. I've come to accept the fact that the brake pads on the Toyota from the stock on the stock GR Corolla are Category 5 dust storms, okay? That's what I'm dealing with. Category 5s on all four corners. So the brake dust situation is still ridiculous. However, the brakes are holding up very well. The tires are holding up very well. I said at 9,000, we have 15,000. I still have very good tread left. And these are, these are performance tires. I don't, you know, I'm not going to say they're on the high level of performance in the grand scheme of certain things. But I know for a fact that they are performance tires. But as you can see, you can see the brake dust from over here. I mean, like, that's me. I cleaned this car two days ago. That's what we got. And I was wheel off in there cleaning off the caliper listen man there's nothing we can do about it there's a few people that are changing pads later when these fully go out or change them and we'll see how it goes from there but other than that brake dust is, is what it is rear bumper nice and clean the exhaust tips are a little dirty and you know have like soot from the exhaust in it i did actually polish those and clean them at one point i did not do it in this video this is kind of how they look now probably like 6,000 miles later from the last time I did that. But other than that, everything looks clean back here. Here's one thing that's gonna come up. Yes, I know I got these stupid, janky zip ties holding up my license plate. Here's the thing. See, when I went to get the car, I told them, don't touch nothing. Don't breathe on it. Don't even look at it. (laughs) But I told them don't do anything to the car. Don't put the front plate on it. Don't drill a bumper, don't do nothing. And hey, to their credit, they did exactly what I said. The problem is I didn't think about the contingency plan of what I'm going to do to actually mount this rear license plate. Now, I have heard about the JDM brackets and stuff. I ordered one. It did not work well. It did not hold it strong enough. So ultimately, I'm probably just going to drill the bumper. I mean, listen, what am I going to do now? Either way, it's never going to not be there. So I might do a really clean one get like some rivet nuts or like a screw or something where it's like very clean. So when you do take off the license plate, it's a very clean look and it doesn't look all janky or something like that. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I might do that at some point. I don't know when, but something else you'll notice. Something is missing from this picture. What is that boys and girls? That is the rear wiper. I took it off. Now what I use, and you'll see I have a video up on the channel. What I used was a flush mount delete kit from Kill All Wipers. And you can see behind me, I mean, tch, flawless. This thing don't even, you can't even tell that there was something there that used to be a wiper. But if I get in close, now you can see where it's at. And if you notice, you're like, bro, that looks just like the glass. Listen, what can I say? The dudes that did this know what they're doing. That looks great to me especially when you come from the side and you look at it and it has no wiper there it's just clean i put a special finish on the glass cleaner like a ceramic one that you can buy from the fact from any auto zone or wherever you buy car detailing parts and it helps beat off the water i mean the windshield's dirty now but even in a rainstorm i've never had an issue listen my state we don't have snow thankfully So I don't have to deal with snow, salt, gravel kicking up on the car in the winter time. So I can get away with no wiper. Others in other states probably are not going to be able to get away with that. But overall, everything else is holding up well. The car cleans up great. Even with the few little things that I see here and there, sometimes I see everything looks 
the part. Doesn't look bad. Even the rear caps, now these have PPF on them, but this is how they look now, just a little dirty, nothing bad, nothing messing up. I do need to get visors for the window because I would like to have the windows down sometimes and it's kind of rainy or humid outside and it kind of helps with that, protects the interior of it, also allows you to crack the windows a little bit without somebody trying to get into your car. I'm also changing the tint. Now the tint, somebody in this video is gonna say it looks dark. It ain't dark enough. I'm probably going 10, five, zero, I don't even know. But I know I'm going darker all around on the tent at some point because this is the tent that came from the port. And honestly, it's not even that great of a tent, but it's doing okay, so it's doing decent. Now here's one thing that at 15,000 miles, I've been having, I've now had a little change of heart and that's what I said I was gonna talk about. And that's this, the PPF on the front bumper. Now. I've been to a few places to get different opinions. The place that installed mine did a very good job, but the way this bumper is designed with these cuts and these indentations, it's not easy to get every single thing perfectly covered. <clears throat> from what I heard, from what I researched, the only way that you can get everything perfectly covered is if you take a giant sheet of PPF and then custom cut all around, and you're gonna pay a premium for that because you're paying for a whole sheet that you're not even using as opposed to the computer cut ones that don't waste a lot of PPF in order to get the shape they need. But that's not the issue I have here. The issue I have is that I can now see where the PPF, <clears throat> I don't wanna say discoloring, but I can see where it's at with sunglasses, glasses, or I can see the line or not even the line because you can see the edge of it, but I can see where the color shifts, where it's almost like a yellowish hint, a tint of it. But I also know because of the roads I drive on, I live in an area where I'm on the highway, it can be dusty dirt, that all the places where there's edges and crevices, dirt's accumulate, and there's really no way around it. I actually had it reapplied one time already, and a gentleman that did it said, man, listen, there's really no way to stop that from happening like every single time dirt is going to collect in the corners and unless you just power wash it every single moment maybe that'll help mitigate it collecting in corners but for the most part you're always going to get something in this corner here you're always going to get stuff in the edges there and i can kind of get in close to kind of show you what i'm talking about so if you get close to where this ppf is this is dirty now but you can kind of see the defined line of it right that line, even if I wash the car, is never going anywhere because now dirt has kind of adhered itself to the very edge of that, as well as when you follow it. So when I see it and I'm washing the car, and maybe on this video you can't see it, I can see the slight change in the color. I'm not really feeling that. And what I've come to the conclusion of is I live in a blazing hot state. It was 105 degrees like every day last month. So... I also can't really play around with PPF getting too kind of beat up on the car because there is something that can happen where it's been on a car for so long that when you go to take it off, some of the paint gets messed up and we already got, you know, one ply paint. I ain't got the two ply. We got the one ply paint from Toyota. So there is a possibility that that could have an issue coming off. I don't know. I could be talking out of the side of my head. I don't even, maybe I don't even know what I'm talking about. PPF guys might come here and be like, yo, they don't know what he's talking about. And so, hey, that's why I think in the future, the very near future, I'm gonna take the PPF off the entire car, have a cer detailed, ceramic coated, and I'm gonna ride like that. Anything that happens, I'm gonna do touch of paint. I'm gonna do basically touch of paint. I mean, that's really the only thing you can do. Here's something else that happens, right? So 15,000 miles, everything looks great that you can see here, but here's one thing I have had happen. So if you look here inside of the cup for the door, you'll notice like scratches and dirt accumulating there. Now, here's what's funny. Clearly this was from before because I don't have the habit of like scratching in here to try to open the door. I'm literally like this and I open the door, right? And the same thing for the rear because nobody comes back here. Even when my kids occasionally come, it's not that you know crazy when it comes to the door cup so one of the things that i'm going to do when it comes to the full detail is getting this all corrected 
getting a whole entire car corrected because I never actually had the entire, I had the car detailed really well, but I've never done a paint correction. I never did a full polish and I wasn't really moved to do it. Honestly, I wasn't like rushing about, oh, I got to hurry up and get the whole thing polished and protected and all this. I did a good one stage. Now I'm going to go up to the two stage. And I think now I'll see more of the benefit because the car having more miles on it, having been out in the elements more, to me, it's more of a benefit. I'll ceramic the whole thing and then we'll kind of go from there. But exterior wise, solid. I really have no complaints. Those small things are like nitpicky. I mean, aside from the grill situation that I think I noticed today. But everything else, there's no dents. I got no dings. I park 900 miles away from everybody. I don't want a soul near me. Okay? So I make sure I'm far away so that nobody comes near me. Now let's get into let's get into the next phase. Like let's talk about the interior, right? Let's open, let's pop the trunk. Modification. See, I got the rear strut bar from TB Performance. It definitely helps with the car, how it feels placed in the rear. That sticker is from a great company, a gentleman on Instagram called Car Drugs. He makes really dope stickers and slaps. I said buy monies because that's really what's been going on around here. Rubber floor mat. I have a couple things down here now. If the time goes on, it's ownership. I got a couple you know, baby wipes, always need those around. If you got kids, and if you don't have kids, you might need one for yourself. I got microfibers. There's um, probably air freshener stuff down there. This is a plastic cover in case I need to pick up anything from like Home Depot or something and I need to lay down the seats and I lay that whole plastic sheet down. It's actually a shower curtain. If you want to hack, go buy a shower curtain and use it in your car whenever you got a haul and pick up something, lay it down the interior and you won't be scratching them nothing. So that's what I do for there. Now let's go back to the back seat. Now, nobody's really been back here, honestly. Like my kids here and there come here. Let me take this out. But that's the back seat. You can notice there's one little booster seat there. That's for my five-year-old. The nine-year-old can sit in the front and he'll sit back here sometimes. But everything else is holding up. I don't have anything in the way other than a fly that's stuck in here that's going to die. Now, plastics are good simple right like i said in my last video everybody was like oh cheap interior plastic this and that we've already been through it the interior is quality it is just not going to be of a certain material that you want right that's just all that's all it really comes down to if you want alcantara and leather you're going to have to either go for the circuit or the marizo one and if you want higher in leather and stuff like that then you got to go to another car man i don't know what to tell you bro <laughs> like go get the b go get the europeans go get the bmws Go get the AMGs. They got you. But here's the interior. Back of the seat. There's been a few little feet that have kicked the back of it here and there. But, I mean, it's holding up. This is 15,000 miles. Now, that really doesn't give you much review. I know somebody's going to be like, you don't sit back there. Show us a driver's seat. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Relax. Chill. We're going to get to it. Here is the driver's seat. 14. 15,000 miles, sorry, not 14. This is what it looks like. I daily drive it. What's the side bolster look like? You got a couple creases right here. Now, I don't have like a crushed side bolster because I don't sit in my seat like a Neanderthal. Okay, just sitting on the side bolster. I like to get in with a little bit of, you know, some type of grace. Like I said, I'm a big dude, 6'3", 240. I think I gained weight, I went on a cruise. I was eating and chilling, so I mean, listen, things, you know, they go places, but you know, I'm still comfortable in the seat and the seat's still in good condition. Same with the door, door card. Now, this part right here is a little dirty. I need to clean it, but for the most part, I usually clean that with a brush and a microfiber it cleans that up. There are some scuff marks. Like I said before in my last video, I have a few here that happened from me getting in and out of the car. However, the funny part is that this plastic grabbed it, but over here, it did not. So there's some scuffs there, but those went away when I like wipe them off. Floor mat's dusty and dirty because it's an all-weather floor mat and I didn't clean it off. And I do have something that kind of renews that. Pedals are doing good. Under the dash is doing good. 
I have a few modifications for the IMT button that keeps it on whenever I start the car, so I don't have to keep pressing that every time. Center console and everything is doing well. A little dusty, but that's fine. Everything else is holding up. The piano black is still piano black, even though it's a fingerprint magnet. The dashboard is clean. Might be a little dusty in this video. This is clear, this is clean. Passenger seat is obviously flawless because barely anybody sits in there. My wife on our date night sits in there and my son if I take him somewhere, but everything else, door car, there's a few little scuffs down there at the bottom. That's gonna be rectified. So soon enough, I'm gonna buy the Tom's. They have like a door card like cover at the bottom. I think it looks cool. It does help with the scuff marks. It helps clean that up and helps you be able to wipe it off very easily. So I'm gonna add that later. I am gonna also review one other thing too. So when I got this car, I think at 9,000 miles, I already had the armrest from Six Element. And at 2,000 miles, I was talking about the lack of an armrest and how much I needed it. So since then, I have had the Six Element armrest for at least, at least, 10,000 miles, maybe eight between eight and 10,000 miles, I've had this armrest in the car. That is from Six Element, and no, it's not a sponsored ad, but that thing has held up for this entire time. Now, one of the benefits here is that I have storage in there, as you can see, that allows me to put some stuff in there that's much needed. This can kind of come out if you need to, and it all sits well. I've had that for eight to 10,000 miles. It has not failed me. It hasn't fallen off. It hasn't, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I'm gonna say a couple things. Don't buy that armrest if you're trying to get like OEM level of plastics and materials and build quality. It is very good for the aftermarket part of it. It was inexpensive in my eyes but it does the job for what it does. Would I love the OEM one from Toyota? Absolutely. There's a few people online that are trying to like piece it together from the regular Corolla. I would love that instead, but this is what we got. And so far it's been working well. Now, when I first did get this, I was like, I'm gonna add more red stitching inside the car. I've since changed my mind. I see like the white stitching. I like the understated look and I'm gonna kind of play into that and kind of almost get black seats and kind of make it a darker interior. So at some point, I'm probably gonna buy another armrest with the white stitching on it, or maybe find somebody that wants to swap it or something, but that's just a little thing. I bought the red stitching because that's what I thought I was gonna go, but you know, I changed my mind, things happen. There you go. That's the interior, 15,000 miles. Oh, look at the steering wheel. Steering wheel at 15,000 miles, as you notice, I like to keep, I clean the car. I detail it, I wipe off the steering wheel, I don't have greasy cheeseburger fingers gripping the wheel. So everything I have will be in good condition. The stitching isn't a disaster of a mess because it's kind of like a white gray stitching. Everything looks clean. I wash my hands, do the same thing if you have the car. If your steering wheel looks like a mess, you gotta ask yourself, why aren't you washing your hands more often? So that's the interior. Everything, inside of there has been working well there's been no electronic issues we're going to go check out the engine i'll be perfectly honest i haven't popped the hood in dumb long so this engine is probably mad dirty but hey that's just the life of a daily driver you know you live in life oh it ain't that bad i mean i definitely gotta come here and clean this thing but we ain't looking too bad i mean it's a little dusty but i mean what do you expect like i said i'm in the streets but everything is holding up very well no leaks, no issues, no lack of power. I mean, it's just been, listen, when people like a car, some people are trying to find an issue or they think that because the people that enjoy the car so much because they bought it are just using superlatives and hyperbole, like you're just gassing us up, man. It ain't that good. I heard somebody that got one that blew a motor. I heard somebody with the all wheel drive was overheating. Listen. If there is an issue, let's take the all-wheel drive overheating. When you're on the racetrack, the temperature sensor that's in the rear diff reads much higher than maybe what the fluid in the diff is, and it causes the car to have a kind of a fail-safe system where it kind of shuts down 
the all-wheel drive system in order to cool off. Many people are already focusing on a solution for that. That really only happens for the very heavy track users. I haven't seen it on the back rows, even getting the temps of the oil up to like 250. I'm sure somebody may have if they're hitting the tail of the dragon and they're going crazy or Angel's Crest or some other renowned back road, mountain road. We don't necessarily have that where I live and the ones that we do have like the Twisted Sisters, I didn't see it happen on there. So, but again, I'm not like Randy Proust. I'm not Richard, you know, Lewis Hamilton. I am a daily driving. I can drive decent for myself. I know how to get spirited driving and not kill myself, but I'm not a person that's pushing it 10 10 on the road so keep that in mind when people are speaking about this but other than that everything else here has been rock solid and i know like i said every time when people have a car that they love and i truly love this car we might sound like we can't find no problem but i gave y'all i gave y'all a few like listen the paint on this thing is what it is i mean like i said one ply interior is held up is it the fanciest interior in the world no are you gonna have deviated stitching and diamond stitching and you know starlight and the headliner no you can add all that if you want to but as i said before as the car has been in my ownership for 15,000 miles it has not failed me yet there hasn't been any issues there haven't been any concerns no check engine lights because i don't have an aftermarket intake that costs 1600 dollars <laughs> um Everything has been great. I, I can't complain. Outside of maybe me not liking how great the paint is, and that's just a pet peeve, and I mean, I'm asking for something that's not gonna come on a car that's basically $40,000, but that would be the place where I'm gonna put my focus on this coming year and into the winter season, is me cleaning that up, P, not PPFing, probably removing it off the front bumper right there, ceramic coat full detail paint correction and all of that but how it drives how it performs now i did mention about the radio like i said before the radio is decent at best and that's just because my ears prefer something with a bigger sound stage and a bigger range we're going to rectify that soon if oem plus audio releases something with a subwoofer we're all done. I'm probably going to buy that and be out of here. If they don't, I'm going to have to go to the aftermarket and go to a stereo spot out here. It gets jiggy with it. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to have to go find the sub, find a place to put it, put one in the back. But I need some more range. I need some more bass. I need some more trouble. I, mean, I need it all. One of my other friends, Tony Fam, GR4 RCE, if you see his plate, he has an aftermarket system on his car and it sounds great. And it, that was basically to put the battery in my back when I heard that. And I was like, I got to do this now. Like, I have to. So, OEM Plus Audio, please put a subwoofer on the system that you're making for this car. We need it. Now, what's the next, right? We've done 2,000. We've done 9,000. We've done 15,000. Now, I didn't get into the nitty gritty of the car and parts of that because, I mean, you've already seen it. My old videos have go through all of that. The one at 2000 was like introduction. 9000 is how do I still like it? 15,000 is like, man, you're getting up there. Like, what's going on? I showed you the few things that are an issue, which would be mostly with the paint, with the door cups. Maybe if that issue, I noticed the grill is actually an issue. But the overall package of the car, the performance of it, how it runs, how it's been operating, how the maintenance has been. I've only ever changed the oil and rotated the tires in 15,000 miles. And for anybody that wants to know, I don't, I don't beat on the car, but I drive it how it was designed. I don't baby it. I'm getting into the high RPMs. I'm shifting quickly. We're catching the corners. So because I haven't done so much maintenance, it's not, uh, it's not indicative of me just not driving the car. It's just really solid. Like that's just what it is. Like the Civic Type R's are really solid. Like folks ain't running around doing a bunch of maintenance. These cars are made extremely well. If you run into an issue, sometimes that can be self-induced, meaning 
you put some parts on there that you probably shouldn't have put on there. Maybe you did something that didn't really fit the car and something's wrong with it. But the overall nature of the vehicle is that it has been an enjoyable ownership experience for 15,000 miles. And I'm gonna come back at probably 25,000. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of move it up. I know I was doing like nine, then 15. You may think I would do 20, but I'm gonna do 25 next. Next time I come back here to do this update, it's gonna be 25,000 miles. Hopefully by that point, I may be a little bit lower. I may have some different wheels. I may have some different seats. I may have some other modifications. Maybe I did a power mod, I don't know. But as the car stands now, the GR Corolla is so good from the factory that altering anything for the sake of performance is not an easy thing for me to do. See, I kind of get worried about it because I know that anything that I do is just gonna make it worse if I don't know what I'm doing. I wanna lower it. I just like the lowered stance, but I don't wanna lower it and lose the handling. I, want it, I do like the idea of an exhaust and more power, but I don't wanna lose the balance of the car. So everything that I wanna to do to the car is indicative on the aftermarket and very high quality stuff coming out. And that stuff doesn't come cheap. And when it does show up though, I'm definitely gonna be one of the first people that are gonna try it out and say, hey, let's just see, can I improve on the mid-range power? Can I improve on the handling? Can I make it look better? Can I improve on the aesthetic? All those things, and they're coming. So there you got it. 15,000 miles in a GR Corolla. If you're thinking about buying one, if you're on the fence, I don't know what fence you can be on, but if you're really considering one of these and your apprehension is maybe how it holds up over time, I can tell you in 15,000 miles of daily driving on a freeway where the speed limit is 75 and up, I am in good condition. Gas mileage, let me throw that out there. I average about 24 miles per gallon. Some people have gotten it up to 30. Some have gotten it as low as 11, <laughs> I've seen. But even with my, I'm not babying it on the freeway. I don't stick it in on cruise control at 60 and sit there. I'm moving along. So even with my normal driving, 23 to 24, no, it's not the craziest gas mileage. It's not a Prius. It's not a hybrid. But given what the car can do, given how it's designed, given how it is meant to perform, you can't complain. I mean, if you wanted something that had better gas mileage, then you definitely wouldn't buy a car that takes 93 octane or 91 or premium. You'd buy something that takes regular and gets near 35 to 40 because there are plenty of cars out there that do that. They're just not fun to drive like this. So this car quicks again. If you're out there, if you're like, man, how is this car? I'm thinking about it. Look at all my videos in this series from 2000 to 9000 to 15,000. I said the same thing every single time. And it's not because I'm making the no payment on it. It's because I know how the car performs and where its weak points are. Mainly the only thing I've ever talked about is really like the paint being like, you know, just not that great as far as the level of layers into it. But the overall car is built extremely solid. The drivetrain is rock solid. Oh, actually speaking about that before I bounce, I did add a rear pitch mount that added a stiffer bushing on it to help with the movement of the engine from back and forth and you're shifting really hard. That has transformed how this car drives in the twisties. Now I have a fairly aggressive bushing on mine. Mine is I think an 85, 85A Duro, or however the rating goes on a polyurethane they use. I'm gonna drop it down to like 60 or 70 because it does add a fair bit of vibration to NVH, but I can deal with it. It doesn't bother me, nothing is rattling in the car unless I have something in a cup holder or something like that. But it has transformed how this thing performs. I do have a video coming up on that. I actually recorded a long time ago. I just never put it up because it was a janky way of me recording it. But hey, for the sake of content, I might just throw it up there and call it what it is. But I might do that after I change out the bushing to see what the differences are. And I've had that on this car for about 8,000 miles as well. So I've been rocking with this, with that setup. I love how it drives. It reduces the movement of the car. It feels great when you're shifting hard, when you're coming around corners and you're downshifting. And that's like the biggest modification I've done. I'm waiting for stuff to come. I don't want to jump on the gun. The video I have on the exhaust from 2J Racing, that one is a great exhaust that I really, really am probably gonna buy that one because I just love the way it sounds and I love the way it looks. 
we got a couple things to work out with them but once that comes that's going to be the one i get and that's pretty much it listen the car is great if you're thinking about this or a type r or an n from hyundai or whatever put this it's on the top of your list because I can sing its praises because I've been in it long enough to know it is great. Man, that's it. I got nothing more for you. I'll be back at 25,000. In the meantime, in between time, check out the podcast. I love doing it. I know it's been a little late on the last episode because I did the exhaust video. The new episode is probably coming. I'm recording that tonight. Check out the channel. Subscribe. Like do whatever man i'm here for the long haul i love doing this stuff it took years for me to decide to pick up a camera start doing it and i'm here so there you got it Fifteen thousand miles the car is in good shape i love it go get one if you got to fight for markups try to beat them in the head hold off do whatever you can more are coming the blue flame version is coming for the circuit i really like it will i get one will i trade in who knows stay tuned peace now let me go check out this front bumper business because I don't even believe, I mean like really? Like come on dog. Like how? Is that really the case? Is my joint, is my genre really, it's really disconnected. I'm gonna have to go do the warranty on that because I ain't feeling that. Ain't no accidents or nothing. All right, well. We we'll have to check something out on that. That ain't cool. Yo, the grill at the top is kind of coming off. Listen, there goes 15,000 miles. The front grill at the very top, three of the tabs look like they just broke off. Like, not because I hit something. It looks like they got so hot in this Texas blazer that them chunks just brittled off and cracked. There goes the problem. That's the problem. I still love the car though. Go cop it if you want. Peace.